Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. We are excited, as always, to have a good brother and uh, stalwart, Mr. Gregory Manorino, joining us for a monthly update on all things financial. So if you are new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share as it helps the channel grow. Greg, good to have you back, as always, brother. Great to have me. I appreciate being here. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's, some, it's an honor to get on your busy and ever ever present schedule, getting busier by the day. <laughs> it's too much, man. It's too much. I keep saying it's going to get easier, but it don't. No, because as things are happening, uh, it yeah. just becomes inevitability, which is a great place to, as always, for us to start. So, um, Greg, I, first question is, in our previous discussions, we discussed predictions for the Fed rate cut. Um, you, we look at your MMRI um, index as sort of a purview or an indicator. You felt that the last time we talked, it would be in June, which obviously nobody has control of that on our end. Going forward, do you think the Fed will start to cut the rates a quarter percent in September prior to the, as you say, selection? Or do you think they'll do a surprise ambush and cut it this month to get ahead of the curve? Well, let me just start off with this. Who's buying all the debt right now? Are we seeing what's happening here? Mm -hmm. Just because the Fed hasn't voiced uh, that they are uh, buying more debt or, in fact, cutting rates, they're doing it right freaking now. Uh, I mean, it's an incredible thing. Just look, you know, just this morning, I did a video where I demonstrated, I read off the Fed's own website, you know, I tell people to utilize the Federal Reserve's own website because all the information you want to know is pretty much right there. So the Fed is ballooning, ballooning the money supply right now. Since since February, it's incredible. It's gone almost straight up here in an environment where the economy is absolutely cratering. I mean, it's uh, it's even getting mainstream. <laughs> Talk, they're even talking about how the economy is not doing well. Uh, but again, you know, we're supposed to believe they're all doing fantastic. But the Fed is in there buying all the debt. They're buying all the debt. So they don't have to voice that they're cutting rates. We just got to look at the bond yields. The bond yields are coming down. So, I mean, it's really kind of in our face. They're going to make the official announcement relatively soon. I don't think it's too far off. But the fact of the matter is the Fed is in here as they always are. You know, most people don't, I know you get this, but most people don't have any clue as to how the Federal Reserve keeps rates at XYZs because they have to get into the market and make it happen. They don't just say it. Imagine having that kind of power like, you know, God, okay, I'm going to just by decree it's going to happen. No, it doesn't work like that. The Fed mm -hmm. has to create the cash out of nothing, and then they have to get in here and buy the debt. And that's how they uh, they rig the markets, how they push cash into certain asset classes and have it pulled out of other ones. But they're in here right now buying the debt. Uh, they're pushing bond yields down. And I, I think this is going to get much more extreme moving forward. As a matter of fact, Citigroup just came out today explaining that they believe the Fed is going to be cutting very sharply very soon. And what is this going to do? It's just going to distort everything. It's going to get even worse with regard to uh, uh, people getting sucked dry. Um, it's a vampire system that is wiping people out by design here, uh, making the one and two percent is richer. But again, let's just emulate what they're doing. And I think that's pretty much uh, it's a no brainer here. How we keep ourselves on the right side of this. And, and look, we made a reference to the, the Manorino market risk indicator earlier. And I think this is the best risk indicator that has ever been invented in the history of the world, even though it's my own little mad creation. But, you know, when I, when I came up with this thing here, I was, I was, it started out something for myself. I said, okay, you know, how can I personally better gauge market risk? So when I, when I came up with this little equation uh, with the MMRI and I said, hey, you know what, this works. I'm just going to share it with everyone for free because I think knowledge is power, wisdom, power, you know. So here we have a, a window where we can look into how cash is being created out of nothing, uh, rates are being suppressed, currency devaluation here, and seeing how it plays out in the market. Record high, record high, record high, record high, record high, record high, as the economy is cratering faster and faster. This phenomenon is something that you know I've spoken about for an hour freaking long. The faster the economy nosedives, the higher the market's going to go, as long as we see risk abated as the Fed's buying all the debt and, of course, devaluing the currency. We're going to see much more of that moving forward. 
Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so next uh, segue question, Greg, is looking at China, they continue to make aggressive gold moves, as you know, as well as working now with Javier Malay of Argentina, additionally to providing debt forgiveness to several African nations. I guess the question would be, because you and I always talk about becoming your own central bank, we are big proponents of that for obvious reasons. How much time do you imagine we have to become our own central bank before they try to take over in 2030? Well, let's just say this, China right now, the, this is... I just think this came out yesterday. They're mm -hmm. now going to be involved in just what the Fed is doing, a, a repurchasing agreement, uh, more asset purchases moving forward. The system is drying up here. And it all comes down to liquidity as as. I've been speaking about it, and I'm sure you have for a very, very long time. And it's 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 the system. It operates in a perpetual vacuum that can never be filled. So, I mean, it's it's just a mechanism here of more debt, more uh, 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 manipulation of the debt market, and China's involved in it right now. The Fed's full-blown. All these central banks will operate the same way and because that's how they gain their power and their control over the people. This is just going to come apart faster moving forward. But right now, everything seems okay. You know, people look at the stock market. I just It drives me nuts when I'll talk to somebody about any of this stuff, and they'll say, well, hold on a minute, Greg. How is it how is it possible that the economy isn't doing well when the stock market's at a record high? What I tell people is there's no correlation. I've been telling people, in fact, I've been showing people this exact movement for years. This is the stock market, this is the economy. We're now we're off the charts here. People don't understand that there is no correlation anymore. The fundamental factors, this just it's all about easy money. It's it's about nothing. I mean, P-E ratios. I, I talked about that this morning. The S&P 500 now trading at two times. It's mean. And people are just, you know, whistling past the graveyard. They think it's all fine. But these, these things are going to get much worse moving forward. Central banks are coordinating, as they always do, to bring the world economy to its knees. And they do this by creating more debt here. Not, there is not a single central bank on this planet that has the public's best interest in mind. They have their own and their of, and those of their shareholders. The rest of us are just a mean to an end. We're greasing the wheels with our blood and guts and we're being wiped out. As I said earlier, it's a vampire system that is sucking people completely dry. And this is going to lead to a climax. Again, uh, I, in fact, the, the uh, title of my video this morning, I said, we're leading up to a nightmare um, with regard to the market, stock markets of the world, the debt markets of the world. And, and unfortunately, the population um, is, is going to face a, um, I mean, a, a real a, a real rude awakening here. I think we're going to end up with, again, a resource problem on a level that people aren't going to believe. Um, scarcity, uh, rationing, uh, all this kind of stuff down the pipe. But for now, we take advantage of every single thing that comes along our way. We can't let anything get by us because that's how we lose. And I, my job, I consider it my job, my privilege to at least put out these ideas so people can think for themselves. I don't want to think for anybody. I want people to listen to what we say, you and me, like on this show we're doing right now, think about what it means for them and then take action. This isn't these kinds of shows that we're doing right now. These aren't for people that want to sit back and be entertained. This is not entertaining or people want to go suck their thumb somewhere. I want people to think about what's happening to them why? Forget the distractions, the deceptions, the lies, the look here's and look there, and then think about what they need to do for themselves, because we're entering a very, very dangerous period of time where we're going to see a lot of change, and uh, it's going to be very, very rapid, so people need to be ready across the board. Yeah, of course, absolutely, and it's funny, it's interesting, Greg, that you mentioned about how people have a disassociation or disconnect with the economy against the bond market, how they don't correlate, right? And you know that you know and I know this is a script. And so you look to Hollywood, I'm sure a movie you know very well, we've talked about this before, The uh, the Big Short, where that scene where Michael Berry is talking to the insurance agent and he's like, well, doesn't the insurance cover the bond losses? She goes, no, they don't correlate. So they've been telling us for a long time, we just weren't aware, it was, it was in subconscious incompetence. But now, thanks to patriots like you, it's bringing it, you know, galvanized to the whole of the community. So we, we really appreciate that. Um, the next question is, Greg, as President Trump has become a very vocal advocate of Bitcoin and other cryptos, XRP, LXL, XLM, many others, 
Um, do you see a super bull run cycle in October of this year running into the spring of next year? And if so, does that present an opportunity for him to receive campaign contributions prior to this election? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's already seen he's going to he's accepting Bitcoin. He's got a lot of it. A lot of people made some pretty substantial donations to him in Bitcoin and other cryptos, from what I understand. And, you know, look, um, this whole issue, I, what have I been telling people for the longest time? I think in light of how this is going to play out, people need, look, I am not telling anyone to go all in on anything. I always explain to people that I tell people what I am personally doing, and I make a very diversified investor. I have my cash to work in a lot of places. And I think that, especially in light of President Trump's pro Bitcoin. You know, he's actually calling himself the Bitcoin president. I mean, I'll be honest, as a, a person who has owned this stuff, who owns it now, I love it. And, you know, I know he was not always like this. It even took me a long time to come around to understanding, you know, cryptocurrency, the cryptocurrency space. It doesn't make sense to a lot of people. And I get that. But I still think people need some exposure, especially in light of what it looks like after the debate freak show. Um, it looks like President Trump is going to be the next president selected here. And I, I think it's going to be very, very positive for Bitcoin. I think it's going to be extremely dollar negative. Um, as he's been saying for the longest time now, he thinks the dollar needs to be weaker. This does not help we the people. It does help the corporate agenda, uh, especially the multinational corporations here. Uh, I expect their profits to go up. Um, I expect the markets to go up. He's also talking about the Federal Reserve keep you know, suppressing rates. This is, of course, a way to empower the Federal Reserve, but it's also going to push the stock market to heights. We're not going all these distortions that we're seeing are going to get monumentally worse. And that means opportunity, opportunity. And look, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. And if you think what I'm saying is offensive to you, just, you know, verify the facts. Am I, am I saying anything that's not true? This is what he's been saying. So take the man at his word. Get some Bitcoin or crypto in your portfolio. Bet harder against the hyper debt bubble that we are in. Expect the Federal Reserve to get a lot stronger. Expect the, federal, the, the stock markets of the world to become more hyperinflated than they are now. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it playing out right now. And it's just, it's just too simple, at least to me, to put these things together and say, okay, put polit politics aside, okay, and focus on what it means in the grand scheme of things here. And it's just too easy. It's too easy. Yeah, because like you said, you know, you can see the trend and you're helping us to see the trend. So I think the key thing you said is opportunity. We can go counterintuitive to what they're telling us in their comms so that we can kind of hedge against it. And, and again, great, great uh, uh, perspective on your part. Um, interesting sort of, um, I don't want to say phenomenon, probably epidemic is a better word, but it's, I think it's a uh, symptomatic, Greg, of what we've been talking about with the treasury yield, with the bond market, with all these other things we've discussed. And that is, we see businesses closing the commercial real estate, mal malls are drying up left and right. Uh, we're seeing uh, the real estate market tanking, as you know, the uh, NR National Association of Realtors did about an 8% drop in April. We haven't seen the numbers come out for June. We can expect it to be in double digits. And yet the whole of society doesn't even seem to notice what in your estimation is going to be the trigger point that is going to force the majority of the population to wake up and take action? They never do. It is always the same story. People get into some kind of a state of euphoria. I'm, I'm a paper millionaire. I'm a paper multimillionaire. I am happy with the way things are going. I don't care that there is a disconnect between the economy and everything else. They don't care until they're forced to. And this is how, again, the few have... have destroyed or controlled the many since time immemorial here. Let people live in their little boxes. Uh, let them get all euphoric about their investment plans, their 401k, their real estate. None of this is realized gains. It's just paper. It doesn't matter. But again, this is a, the distraction, deception, the power of illusion 
this whole thing, this entire environment is a fraud. I don't know another way to put this here. It's fraudulent across the board, beginning with the name of the Federal Reserve, which we all know is not federal and has no reserves. Okay. Uh, the entire, who controls the economy, the markets, the monetary system, it's the Fed. It ain't presidents, kings, queens, monsters, dictators. But again, people, again, they're locked into whatever paradigm they've been placed in by by the mainstream media or by whatever candidate they think is uh, you know better than the other one and in in my view it doesn't matter if it's a uniparty they're all part of the same animal here two wings of the same bird unfortunately and uh and i i think uh, it, people don't think unfortunately they always wake up too late and that's a very sad thing and then they don't know where opportunity is they unfortunately people have been so distracted with what they're being told from the mainstream media is reality and it's not whatsoever here. It's all a show. Nothing is what it seems to be. So they don't even know what to do. You know how many people say to me, hey, Greg, you know, I, I know you like gold and silver. You've liked it for a real long time, but how do I get real gold and silver? People have no idea that you can act. When I tell people that <laughs> some people I've spoken to, some very close friend of mine are absolutely shocked when they find out that you can actually buy actual gold and silver you can convert your fiat into gold they have no idea that it works like that um yeah and, and you know if people go wow i never knew this is how basic it is so what's going to end up happening unfortunately is again this multiple hyper bubble environment we're going to see much more distortions moving forward a lot of it is and my my what i've been trying to tell people especially over the last few months is with regard to currency devaluation across the board, we're about to see. I mean, across the board, I mean by central bank currencies in, in general, not just the Fed. They're all going to be devalued moving forward as central banks you know, continue to inflate because that's their one and only power. The more debt a central bank can issue or is called on to issue, for example, keep rates suppressed, weaken the dollar, the stronger the central banks become, not weaker. Unfortunately, we're seeing this play out here. But but, but again, understanding people don't know what to do about the current thing here. Most people are invested on one side of the market, and that is the long end, meaning people are expecting the market to continue higher, and it has done that. And I expect to see more record highs moving forward until it doesn't. And what I go back to always, and again, it's that the MMRI, which is allowing us to see what's happening in real time. The more the suppress rates, the more the dollar is weakened, the wider the doorway opens for cash to make its way into equities or the stock market here. It also pulls cash out of places where it should be going into, commodities which are on sale. Commodities right now, in my view, and, and, and crypto, because they're taking pretty, a pretty big hit as of late. Are, are on sale like people can't possibly believe. I don't, I'm not saying that this is the bottom in no way, shape, or form, but we shouldn't be thinking in those kind of terms. What we should be thinking about is the longer run. If we realize the longer run is, again, hyper debt on a scale that people can't possibly believe, a, a very a much more inflated stock market, well, you got to be long the market right now until we see a turnaround in risk. And this can be watched again in real time, MMRI, free to everybody, link on my website, uh, traderschoice.net, people can go there. Okay. Now with understanding that, where's the opportunities here? I can't imagine a better place to be than commodities as well right now. In fact, silver, as you well know, my favorite asset of all time. And I base this on, again, not just like something I think out of thin air, because I look at the Dow gold ratio, gold silver ratio. Then you got to look at, you know, the, the, the means for all this stuff and where it actually should be eventually. And they got to say, hey, where's the bottom of the market? We don't know. So it could be, you know, this is a black hole here. We do know that you know, the Fed jumped in here at Dow 12,000, uh, no, Dow 12,000, 6,000, right? When we cut the market in half, 12,000, 6,000, the Fed jumped into so the bottom is 6,000 or less. <laughs> and, uh, and I think in an extreme example, we could we could drop below Dow 6,000. And uh, and then the, we're going to get a, a a gold Dow ratio of one to one. Uh, I, I just really believe that's true. Maybe even two to one, depending on uh, favoring gold, depending on how extreme this is. Because right now, commodity prices are so un. un unbelievably suppressed i i think they're going to overcorrect probably in, in a big way yeah yeah and i think you're right i think the the, the ceiling or the basement rather is probably somewhere between three and six thousand for the dow when this thing properly corrects from what we can see so a good and important follow-up question greg for the baby boomer generation in particular because i think my mm -hmm. generation and your generation are wholly aware of this um, not to count on social security not to count on pensions and 401ks 
you know, but a lot of that generation is, you know, ardently, adamantly stubborn about not buying precious metals for some unknown reason, because they were old enough to remember prior to the Nixon switchover, right, that we're going yeah. back to. Um, yeah. What's going to happen for those people if they stay in the dollar, if they stay in pensions, 401ks and don't convert? Well, that's the whole, that's, you know, I was, I was trying to, I kind of lost my train of thought, but people that are only stuck in one asset class, like for example, the stock market, not hedging themselves with an anti-debt unit, gold or so, or so. And you see, look, again, going back to what people don't understand is Mark, cash moves through these markets in predictable patterns. If we realize, okay, look, what have central banks been doing? They've been artificially suppressing rates since the meltdown of 2008. What has this done? It has reinflated a housing bubble on an epic scale, in my view. It has reinflated a stock market on an epic scale. Uh, and that has proven to be very profitable for a lot of people. And again, those people you're talking about, they're all going to be caught off guard. You have to be hedged here. And, and, and the ultimate hedge, in my view, is again, holding precious metals. Uh, I can't imagine in a better place. I really can't. I think about this stuff all the time. The best hedges to the market are definitely in hard assets. Um, silver, again, my favorite of all time here. And I think the the it just can't go another way. Understanding that risk on will turn risk off. Cash again moving through the markets in predictable patterns. But the but, but people need to start really focusing on more than anything else is not the stock market crash because that's where you're told to look. And everyone say, when is the stock market going to crash? When is the stock market going to crash? Forget about the stock market. It's mm -hmm. the debt market, which is the driver. I've tried to explain to people, and I probably was the first person, I don't know, ever to say that the stock markets of the world are nothing but derivatives as to what is happening in the debt market. Meaning debt mo the debt market, which is multiple multiples larger than the, the stock market by exponents, multiple exponents is the driving force behind stock markets. So the weather, matter of fact, every single asset in a real market derives value from what's happening in the debt market. Now we have this environment where central banks have done nothing but hyperinflate this. They're buying all the debt, they're devaluing the currency. There's no real price discovery anymore. There's not a single asset today that has a real price discovery mechanism behind it because of the mechanism of central banks and what they have done, what they're leading up to. Um, the climax, the end, the shift, this new thing, this new system, which is going to be a digital tokenized system. I already explained this to people and mm -hmm. written papers about it and everything else. Here. But that's that, but that's where we're going. People always, unfortunately, the vast, vast, and I mean vast majority, will get caught on the wrong side of this, unfortunately, as they always do. I mean, you know, history is a, is a good teacher. Just look back and, and they're going to get wiped out. They're going to get absolutely wiped out. Um, if they're stuck on the wrong side of this and, and not knowing when to get out. Um, and, and that comes back to looking at risk. We know when to get out here. Um, again, by looking at the MMR, I know I keep talking about this, but I really believe this is there's not a single better risk indicator that's, that's been created for this market. And I'm not, and again, I'm, I don't I don't make anything from it, but I offer it this for free. So I want people to use utilize this resource here that's available to them for nothing. And um, because I want us all to succeed here. And I realize that the system is going to favor some, uh, very, very few over the masses here. And I want people that follow our work, yours and mine, to have a, a really a, a very acute perspective as to what's going on. I think most people that follow our work do. And but we need more. Again, you know, it, it's a, it's incredible how channels like yours and mine uh comparatively have such small followings as compared to some other nonsensical thing. I always refer back to people eating Tide Pods and licking toilet bowls. It's millions and millions of followers there. You know, it's an incredible thing. But you know, if people want to be entertained as as to hearing the truth, which they can't handle. You, you want to make an enemy, you tell them the truth, period. Uh people can handle this. And then they think we're kind of out there. They don't understand it. But, but that's okay, too. I mean, I think there's a natural selection going on. I've been saying this for quite a long time. If we can get through to one person with this particular interview here, we've made a difference, and that's good. That's a good thing. Couldn't agree more. Um, couldn't agree more. Well said, brother. Uh, yeah, it's, it's funny the things that pass for entertainment these days, but that's a whole other discussion for a whole other day. Um, so this, this question, as funny as you were articulating cogently your point, Kind of brought up the next question I want to ask you. This kind of, Greg, is a dovetail to kind of the first couple of questions we started with today. Um, as you know, you've said it before, and I'm just repeating the narrative, I'm agreeing with you, focusing on the 10-year Treasury bond yield. 
Um, there's this buying and selling off, obviously, with a different veracity to it from the feds with that. Uh, but the question is, do you see the bond market imploding 10% uh, next year, according to your experience, along a couple with the MMRI? And mm -hmm. if so, does that set up 2030 for the rest of the bond market to completely implode? You know, I'll say this. When I was evaluating a few months ago where this was going here, I, it looked to me that 2025 was going to play out to be very uh, negative. And it still certainly may be that, okay, um, with regard to, the, again, I focus on the, I think about the debt market all the time. I don't really think about the stock market because I know that the stock market is going to derive value from what's happening here in the debt market. What I see moving forward here is an exaggerated um, moving forward uh, currency devaluation, exaggerated uh, hyper bubble in debt, and obviously exaggerated price action distortions across the spectrum of asset classes. Now, when does it end? When are we going to get this big, big, big meltdown in the debt market? Um, I think they're going to do this, at, again, this is central banks, they, at a time of their choosing, and they don't have yet, believe it or not, in my view, enough people who are dependent on the system. They must create, I think, much more dependency on the current system, uh, slaves, more slavery to the current system uh, for when they flip the switch here. So again, it's always the same thing. It's problem, reaction, solution. So here's a, once they get enough people involved, they're on the wrong side of this. Uh, although the people are going to believe they're on the right side, of course, here, uh, which is it's always deception. Then they'll pull the plug on this, and then we're going to see that meltdown in the debt market, an uncontrolled sell-off here, where yields spike. Um, and I think we could see 20, 30, 40, 50 basis points rises in the 10-year yield in, in, in a day, maybe even more than that in a very dramatic uh, plane, because everyone's going to run to, door at the, to the door at the same time. And that's when the Fed is, you know, when they say, okay, we're going to just like, right now they're in there buying the debt, quite obviously. When they stop doing that is when we're going to see the implosion here in the debt market, which is going to put pressure on stock markets around the world that people aren't going to believe. Their heads are going to spin around like the freaking exorcist, and that's where people are going to get wiped out. But people who are hedged, people who understand that, it's not a matter of really, look, with regard to getting out of the stock market, you know, you're know, you never going to be the first person out, but if you can look for certain tells as to when we should be running for cover. First of all, people that have been following my, my blog for a while, they, they've done exceedingly well here in this market. We've called the market higher, 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 higher. You, get, you can't be too greedy here. If, if there's a point, and I still think people need to be long the market, and I'll put out a warning, there's no doubt about it. When I start to see real trouble, I'll tell people, I think it may be time to back off. And there's another thing too. You know, people think, oh, I can't sell. I can't sell. Why not sell? Reevaluate your situation here. Okay. It's hard sometimes to get hit around all this. And then you can always get back in. You know, it kind of boggles my mind sometimes when, when I hear you know, this. It's never wrong, ever, ever, ever wrong to pull profits from anything. So, but people don't understand that too as well. Well, I sold too early. Uh, now I got to get back in. You didn't sell too early. You pulled the profit out of it. That's what you did. And you realized you, maybe you should be back in the market and, uh, and, and look for more opportunities and other things as well. So, I, you know, it's, it's, so I don't really think about too much about when this thing, I, I, it's very difficult to put a timeline on any of this because it's just, look, this has gone on way beyond any, where anyone thought it would go. Um, but, you know, central banks have proven to be extremely crafty and people have adapted to living, unfortunately, under this uh, terrible situation that's unfolding with central banks devaluing the currency and uh, and inflating and making themselves stronger at the expense of everybody else. So, you know, for now, what we do is we don't, at least for me, I tell people, you know, don't even think about that. Think where when this is going to happen. Think about what you need to do now to prepare yourself for when that happens and capitalize on the situation in the now. Um, it, it, it's pretty straightforward to me. Uh, I've learned to sleep a lot better at night doing this. <laughs> there was a time when I couldn't handle it, I'll be honest with you. But now that I've become older and I think wiser, and now that we have certain tools that we can utilize and realizing what central banks are working towards, it just makes it simple, very, very easy to understand what we should do about it. It's all about taking action. It's not about being entertained. It's by looking at this, as I always say, and, 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 and don't be afraid. Fear is a paralyzing thing. 
when people look at a lot of this stuff and maybe some people that are listening to this are going to have some some fear and it's fear is it is okay to a certain degree but you got to turn that fear into action um and and i think that that's another reason why people lose is they become paralyzed by feel like a deer in the headlights or whatever it might be um, once you can understand that you got to get rid of that and turn that fear into action your whole life will turn around and you know people say how do how do people know how to capitalize on the system you don't need that much knowledge you just have to understand who our enemy is our enemy in my view of the highest possible order is world central banks and what their eventually goals are we've known for a hundred years what their eventual goals are going to be to be the lenders and buyers of the last resort to own it all i urge people to read the creature from jekyll island and you will understand a lot more than you understand now if you're brand new here uh go order that book today and uh i, I think it'll it's a life it was a life-changing event for me and i still read it i must have read that book ten, i don't know 10 times alone in the last year or two mm. i must overall my whole life i probably read it 50. um a lot of the stuff that i talk about comes a lot of that book um and it, it's very revealing but you know if people don't have the money to buy a book all this stuff is available online for free anyway. Just look it up. Do your own research on everything that I say. Don't take my word for anything. Absolutely. Well said, Greg, as always. I can appreciate how busy your time is, so I'm going to close with a couple of silver questions since we talked about that earlier. Yep. And uh, this one is the past month or so, as you know, silver has been kind of struggling to maintain its price above that $30 magic number we've talked about before. Do you believe that $30 is the floor and then the breakout will be 50 and then on to 75? And the reason I ask is because it seems like every time the price of silver gets over 30 for any period of time, the price gets slammed down to around $30 or less. Hmm. Well, I told people this environment right now where there's a lot of buying of, of debt by the Federal Reserve is opening that doorway wider for cash to make its way into the stock market. So the cash has to come from somewhere. It's causing... Malinvestment is, I guess, the only, a better way to put it is cash coming out of things it should be going into while the debt is ballooning around the world. Gold and silver should be multiples higher, multiples higher. But, there, but right now, the environment being maintained is risk on, meaning cash moving into the stock market. That The real move for gold, silver, platinum, palladium, crude oil, commodities across the board, and Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies isn't going to be while the environment of risk on is being maintained. All that stuff is going to skyrocket when the environment turns from risk on to risk off cash coming out of the debt market. Okay. Again, cash doesn't grow little money wings and fly away to money heaven. I've been trying to tell people this for the longest time. All right. Debt market meltdown, cash bleeding out of the debt market, cash bleeding out of the stock markets around the world. It's just going to move into other assets, and there you go, commodities across the board, gold, silver, platinum, platinum, crude oil, uh, and and I also believe cryptocurrencies as well. I just I just look at, that's how I look at it, risk on versus risk off. So that's how it's going to play out. So with regard to, you know, yeah, I, commodities are now, as I said earlier, couldn't possibly be cheaper than they are. And I don't look at them from a day-to-day -day basis or even a week-to-week, -week, a month-to-month. I understand why I am holding it. And I, and I want people to realize why they're holding it too. Not because they're expecting this stuff to put on 10, 20, 40, 50% in a matter of a month or two or three or four, or even a year. It's all about when the debt market implodes. And what they're doing is they're setting it up. They're hyperinflating the debt on a scale we've never seen before. At the same time, it's an incredible thing to watch. You've got the global economy contracting at its fastest pace we've ever seen. We've got global debt surging higher at its fastest pace we've ever seen. What, what a paradox we're having here. That alone should tell people where opportunities are. You just got to look at this stuff. It's it was like hidden in plain sight. Everything is right in front of your eyeballs, but they're going to tell you where to look. Don't look here. Or we want you to look over here. When you have the mainstream media, any politician telling you to look in one spot and not telling you what the bigger picture is, you have to realize there's a motive behind that. Right. Anyone who's not speaking out right now against the system itself and just pointing at whether, whether this thing or that thing, or whatever, you're being lied to. You are being deceived on a grand scale. So we have to look out for each other. That's what I've been telling. We have to unite. We must come together. If we don't do that, and we're not people who follow our work, they're already in our team. They're on our yeah. side because they're smart enough to see what's happening here. Vast majority, no clue. No, they don't even want to know. Uh, which and you try to tell them this that you, this is gonna this video would anger some people, you know, because they just don't want to hear it. 
uh, unfortunately, because they're being set up too. And people don't want to understand that they're being misled, they're being deceived, they're being set up. It makes them angry, so they disconnect from it. But uh, anyway, that's how I see it. Yeah, your comfort zone will kill you, absolutely. And you be comfortable. <laughs> that's comfortable, true. As you know. <laughs> okay, last question for today, Greg, is um, on the silver front. Do you believe that the open pit silver mines in Mexico will be shut down now that Claudia Scheinbaum was elected? She recently stated, quote, no additional concessions for open pit mining will be authorized and existing, existing concessions will undergo thorough evaluation with community consent and careful, quote, assessment of environmental repercussions. You know, who knows, man? Who knows? I, again, it's something else I wouldn't even really think about. It wouldn't affect, it's not going to affect the way I feel about silver or commodities or anything at all. Um, I, I just know for a fact that we all need to um, have some of this. And I think it's another thing too, you know, uh, you, you need uh, you need to be invested here. There's no doubt about it. You need to have some of this in your portfolio. If you don't, I think you, people are going to miss out on the opportunity of, 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 of a lifetime. There's not going to be anything else that's coming. This is all about opportunity, this environment we're in here. And making a twisted system work for us and not against us. That's my take on it. Perfectly said. Well, Greg, as always, appreciate your time. Where can people find out about your work and last thoughts you have for the audience? Oh, you know, tradeschoice.net. And please stop paying attention to that MMRI, people. I think it's 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 a, it's a gift to all of you from me. It's free. It works. Uh, it's proven. It's been around a long time. And uh, there are a lot of people that are utilizing that resource. Again, I, I, if you use it, great. If you don't, that's fine, too. I don't benefit from it, but I hope you do. And that's it, people. We just got to come together, man. It's If we come together, we're all going to be better off. But it's just so difficult in today's environment where people are being divided as they always are and they always lose. Do we not learn from history at all? Really? It's too much, man. I agree. Our, our greatest strength is community and synergy. You're absolutely right. Gregor Manorino, always a pleasure to have you, brother. And we look forward to seeing you back in September. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Take care, brother.